and this politics and this y'all damn crooked ass, dumb ass, idiot ass, should have never been in the White House ass president. And if you find a me and Larry for the first time, please subscribe. His channel, my channel, share. We've also got some great people in the comment sections whose channel you should subscribe to too. Futuristic Mike, subscribe to his channel. My brother, Brandon, Just My Opinion Reviews, subscribe to his channel. And without further ado, let me give you guys the story on your president. And then I'll let you hear the actual audio of this clown saying what he said. So Trump did a series of interviews back around February and March when coronavirus was just getting started. All right. And I like the way this story is coming out now because it's almost like me and Larry took that juice they use in the second Avengers and went back to the past to see what's going on in the future. So the president has been telling y'all here lately, don't wear a mask. You don't have to worry about it. It's no worse than the flu. He's been saying all that. But what he didn't tell y'all was back in March and, and 8 February, he did a series of tape interviews. Questions was given to him and listen to what this clown had to say. And if you still riding for Trump, You've got to evaluate how you come to your thesis about anything in life. Take a listen to this. The president, in his own words, and just to set this up, remember, he has been publicly minimizing the threat to young people. Not a problem for young people. He still minimizes uh, the threat to young people. So he addresses that, and then uh, you'll hear he admits that he's not sharing everything he knows. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob, but just today and, and yesterday some uh, startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. So you, what's going on give in, me a, a, a moment of talking to somebody going through this with Fauci or somebody who kind of uh, it caused a pivot in your mind because it's clear just from what's in on the public record that you went through a pivot on this to oh my god the gravity is uh almost inexplicable and unexplainable well i think bob really to be honest with sure, you sure i want you to i be. wanted to uh I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. You know, but John, this wasn't just about panic. Uh, the White House, we know, is very concerned about the economy. The president is very concerned about getting reelected. And uh, what I think you have to just remind people is we've put together uh, some of what the president is saying at the same time publicly in stark contrast. The virus. They're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. But we're doing great in our country, China. I spoke with President Xi, and they're working very, very hard. And I think it's going to all work out fine. And again, when you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. Uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows. Stay calm. Uh, it will go away. You know, it, you know it is going away. And it will go away. And we're going to have a great victory. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I give the floor to Larry, I have a few things I need to say. Number one, when a hurricane is coming, do you not tell the damn people a Category 5 is not coming? Yes, the fuck you do. And the reason you tell people that is because they need to be prepared. They need to have their mind in sync to listen to the professionals that study this and tell you how to protect yourself. That's number one. That was a lack of leadership. You put the American people in harm when you did that. Number two. You claim you are not trying to put people in panic, but yet every time I've seen you in the last three weeks, you're out here talking about how these protesters are going to come to white people's neighborhoods and tear up their yards, burn down their houses, 
You're stoking panic for that. And then lastly, when they did, when they asked him at a press conference today about this issue, first and foremost, he was talking about why you need to reelect him because of judges, ladies and gentlemen, because of judges. And when they asked the president directly about this bull job, he said, he did not want to admit that he lied. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, how in the hell can you trust anything he's ever said? Because number one, it was a dereliction of duty to sit here and lie to the American people about something this chaotic. You don't lie about this. When aliens enter the atmosphere, people need to know. You, held a, you should tell them by the time the aliens get to the moon. But when they enter the atmosphere, you need to know. And in February, coronavirus was in America. We should have known. We should have been in panic mode so that we can be prepared to do the right things. And last point I'll make. He comes out talking about who is on his list for Supreme Court judges if he gets reelected. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not know this, but there is one arm that has control over the presidency, even though we're supposed to be co-equal branches. The judiciary has control over the president because when you write bull, bullshit ass laws, the Supreme Court can knock it down, which is further fodder for why you have to get out there and vote for Biden. And secondly, to add to all the minutia Trump was screaming today, how the hell are you gonna try to tell Biden that he needs to release his list of judges because they're probably radical when you steal President Trump and release your damn taxes if you're talking about transparency with the American people. Larry, I give it to you. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've gotten to a place in this country where, as, as terrible as it may sound, we have half of the country who are, I just don't, I don't see how there's any argument that can be made at that people who support Trump are patriots at this point. I mean, these people are actively working against the best interest and the safety and security of the American people. So there's no way that you can call them a patriot. We're no longer talking about policy measures in which way is the best way to lower taxes or which way is the best way to educate children or which way is the best way to, to provide health care for people. We're no longer talking about things like that. We're no longer talking about policy issues. We are talking about national security issues. We're talking about the president and the Republicans knew that the coronavirus was much more of a dangerous threat to the American people than it was. And they chose to do nothing about it. And they still choose to do nothing about it. They're still out there actively working against people who are trying to fight the virus. I mean, we just had we just had a report out saying that the, the Sturgis bike rally in, in South Dakota caused 20% of the new cases of COVID-19 in this country from one incident, from one gathering. And that's so far. That's just so far. 20% of all the new cases come from are directly related from just that one outing. These are a bunch of crazy ass white people who do not care about anything else except for them and their whiteness. They are afraid they are going to be displaced and they're just they're they are willing to tear this country to the ground. Their their sense is that if they can't rule America as a white country that they will burn it to the ground and that is what they are trying their best to do. That's why they are allowing Donald Trump in there. It does not matter if Donald Trump is on camera kneeling down, kissing a ring of uh, Vladimir Putin, swearing his allegiance to him. It does not matter. They are going to vote for him anyways. They will vote for him anyways. They already say, there's plenty of them out there already saying it's better to be a Russian than a Democrat. They don't care. They are not American patriots. The only thing that we can do is make sure we go out and vote in such mass that we overwhelm not only their not only their vote but we overwhelm all of the all of the the russian 
and and Republican shenanigans that they are going to do at the ballot box. We need to make sure that we vote in such mass that we overcome whatever margin of error there possibly could be. Mm -hmm. We don't want there to be any issue where they say, okay, well, it looks like this could have been this. This looks like there could have been some shadiness from the Russians or could have been some shadiness from this or that. And that changed it by one percent or two percent. And so if that would have happened, then Biden would have won. No, we need to make sure that we go out there. So Biden wins by eight points, nine points, 12 10 points. points. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so that when they get out there so that when they go out there and, and they pulled all their shenanigans, and it looks like, okay, well, they've done enough to move the, the, the needle two or three points. It won't matter. It won't matter because Biden will still have won by such an overwhelmingly margin, overwhelming margin. I mean, this is not a matter of this is not a matter of politics anymore at this election. We've had elections that were just about politics. This is not one of them. This is a matter of life and death. Oh, and I hope people understand that this is a matter of life and death. And well, if you well, don't take it as such, it could be your life and your death. Well, I mean, Larry, that's really what it is. Well, let's let's just think about what let's just think about what he's basically saying to his supporters. All right. He is basically telling his supporters, I knew that this thing was worse than the flu and it was airborne, but I'm still gonna have your dumb asses come to a rally that I know y'all gonna come see me and tell y'all not to wear masks. He's basically telling you, I'm trying to sacrifice you, you people that keep going to his rallies. This is what this recording is telling you. It's telling you how much he really cares about you. He only cares about you to keep him in power. If he's willing to have you come somewhere, knowing this thing is airborne, knowing it's more dangerous than the flu, and he's protected, he's getting tested every damn day, but he's willing to let you, his fans, come and see him and risk getting sick that should tell you everything you need to know. If he will get you, his fans, sick, well, what the hell do you think he cares about the average American that don't like his ass? You guys want to see this country burn down? And I've heard so many stupid-ass excuses for him. Oh, I'm not voting for Biden because I don't want socialism. Well, bitch, we already got that now. And there is something and that Biden the Republicans... Biden is not a socialist. Biden well, is straight up moderate. It don't matter. It don't matter because Republicans like socialism too. It's called giving it to the rich. That's number one. Then yeah. I heard someone say that Bob Woodard tricked Trump to that. And Larry, you see my response to that. If Bob Woodard tricked Trump into telling the truth, then there is a problem with the person that you're calling the president of the United States. There's a greater problem with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how you shake this thing, and you can shake a chicken to the net, fall off, and you fry the chicken, his ass has got to go. And, Larry, I give the last word to you on this. I mean, that's one of those things when people say that he, they tricked him. You have a journalist that is an experienced journalist. He's an experienced, he's experienced at interviewing people. He knows how to ask people questions, make them feel comfortable, and lead one question into the next question into the next question so that he can get the answers that he's ultimately, you know, looking for. Now, he's not looking for a particular answer, but he is looking for answers to a particular question. Right. And so if you're an experienced journalist, then you know how to ask questions in a series so that you can get to those final questions and get people to answer them. And part of that is, is getting people to answer little bits by little bits by little bits. So by the time that they get to that one final question, they've already given up most of the ghost. All they have to do is find, just put the cherry on top. And that's what he did. What, that's what, what Bob Woodward what, did with, with, what, with, Larry, with Trump. Larry, he gave Trump all the questions before the interview. <laughs> he, he gave Trump all the questions before the interview. How is right. that trying to trick somebody? If you got tricked by You're your right. own trick, you got a trick. Right. And here's the problem, too, is that when this interview happened, Trump probably still didn't think the coronavirus was that big of a deal. He probably didn't think it was going to be as as much of a political time bomb for him because this was this was some months ago. So he probably was thinking this isn't a big deal. It'll blow over whatever. He probably didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. And now it's one of those things that's going to define his presidency. And mm -hmm. And so now he, you know, these tapes are out there. And I mean, unfortunately, I would love for them, I would love for this to really matter. 
but the but unfortunately the reality of it is we live in a we live in a country where half of the people belong to a, a legitimate political party and we have the other half of the people who are basically in a cult. They they are no longer Republicans following a Republican agenda and Republican ideals. They are in a cult that follows their leader Donald Trump. Their dictator. Their dictator. It. Their dictator. Their their dictator whatever that I mean that's what it is. They they are in a cult. They're no longer following the ideals of their party. They're following this particular leader who who changes whatever those ideals are on a whim for whatever he feels like in that moment. And when I mean in that moment, I mean that. In that I don't moment. mean that he changes a couple weeks or months later when something else changes or changes, you know, the next day. I mean, literally, we have seen him change his position from one sentence to the next. Mm-hmm. And so you can't really, I don't know how you deal with someone in a cult because in large part, the people are the, some of these people, some of the Republican leadership, these are not people that are idiots. These are people that, that are, that sh- are academically intelligent. I don't want to mm-hmm. give them any more credit than that, but they're <laughs> academically accomplished. They're, they're lawyers and doctors and, and, and teachers and, and all kinds of different professions. And a lot of people who are intelligent, and they make really bad decisions, they have a hard time admitting that they made a mistake. Not that other people don't, but mm-hmm. it, I think it sometimes is particularly difficult for people who are supposed to be known as being someone intelligent because they don't want to admit they were wrong. They don't want to, they don't want to admit that them, somebody who other people look to and aspire to be like and is supposedly intelligent and well-read and well-thought made this heinous and ridiculous decision. And I think that's where part of the problem is coming is that these people just simply don't want to admit that they're wrong with Donald Trump when that when really what they should do is just go ahead and acknowledge that they made a mistake, cut their losses and walk away from that and say, we need to move on from this. But they're too afraid to make that. They're too afraid to make that acknowledgement. And so they're going to try and just go ahead and take us down with them because that's what I mean. That's really where they're at. They're like, well. If we have to go down, we're going to take everybody with us. Instead of throwing people lifeboats and getting them off the ship, they're just like, nope, we're going to we're going to lock all the cabin doors and make sure everybody drowns with us. Yeah, that's a good analogy, Larry. That's a great analogy because the Trump sycophants, that's how they feel about this. Instead of doing what can benefit them, because most of them are not rich. Most of them are poor, middle class and poor that love his ass. Instead of him, and he hasn't done nothing to help them policy-wise, the only thing he does is give them a morale boost by saying, make America great again, which he's really saying, make America white again. And those people will vote for that than voting for what's in the best interest of not only them, but all the people in America. And all those and all those white people out there that want to feel like they they want to run around thinking that they feel better because ooh we have our Donald Trump he's gonna he's gonna make America great again and blah blah blah. Here's the thing: you can feel like that all you want, but while you're out there not doing the things that you need to do to well, make America still. better, instead of just trying to go out there and try and pump your chest up and act better because you're white, run around with your AR-15s and act like you're the like you're big Billy badass and 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 feel like you're on top of the world because you can go and walk past cops and throw up hand signs to acknowledge to them that you're that you're one of their white supremacist friends while they kill black people. While you know, while you want to do all of that, what's happening is is black people and brown people, Hispanics, Indians, you know, just everybody. We're in school. We're at universities. When you go to the hospital, people get upset. I'm so upset. Whenever I go to the hospital, I can't find anybody but a but a black, brown, or Asian doctor. That's right. Because guess what? We understand the game and we're playing it. It's a long game. This is not a short-term game. While your while your people, while your kids are out there running around playing with guns and then overdosing on freaking opioids, our kids are out there going to school, getting degrees, becoming politicians, becoming doctors, becoming lawyers, becoming accountants, writing algorithms that control your Wall Street, writing algorithms that are collecting data on everybody. 
they're black and brown and Asian people are out there doing the things that we need to do to to lead and run this country in the future because minorities in this country are the future. We are at the very last stages of a white majority in America. If white people want to get out with the program, get out with the program. If not, then all that's going to happen is you will get left behind. You will be a left behind minority because you will be up there with a bunch of drugged out, drunk up kids that don't have a decent education because they didn't want to go to school. And do you honestly believe that when that when they have to go in for a job interview right now, they can go in for a job interview as a white kid with the, with, with a minimal education. And when there's a white person sitting across the table, sure, they're going to get a job. But guess what? When you have me sitting across the table, when you have Lamont sitting across the table, when you have an Asian person or an Indian person, somebody who's had to work their butt off twice as hard to get to every place that they've ever been. And when they've gone to these great schools and they've gotten good good grades and they have degrees and good jobs and they're hiring people, do you think they're going to hire some dingbat who doesn't have a degree and hasn't taken his life seriously because he's white? Hell no. They're going to find the best candidate regardless of what that person's skin color is, which means if you don't take this stuff seriously and stop acting like a fool and think about making America great, if you really want to make America great, then get down with Americans. Don't get down with white supremacy. That's not America. Those people want to be Nazis and Confederates. Guess what? Neither one of those were Americans. Confederates weren't Americans. Nazis weren't Americans. Those were people who fought against America. If you want to make America great again, get down with America. And America does not have the same face today that it did 50 years ago. And you need to get used to it because that is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to put the exclamation mark on this, ladies and gentlemen. Nepotism for whites is dying. And last point, ladies and gentlemen, that I've been telling anyone who is a Republican that has enough respect to sit down to me and have a decent conversation. I've warned your asses that because you rode this far right president for so long, what the hell are you going to do when you ruin the party and you lose control of it for the next 50 years, which is about to take place coming up this November? Ladies and gentlemen, and just, and, and just understand, people. I want I want people to understand. I don't want people to think that I'm trying to say, that I'm trying to pump out some some thing that that white people are going to be op oppressed no, what's happening is, is that the playing field that we keep talking about, that we need to level the playing field, the playing field is starting to level out. Mm -hmm. That is what is happening. The playing field is starting to level out, and it's going to continue to level out over the next decade or so. And what happens is if white people don't get down with it and learn to start playing at the same level, they're going to find themselves left behind because – when you have people saying that when you hear black people and brown people saying, I had to work twice as hard to get here, guess what? They did. I did. They did. Lamont did. We know what it means to work like that. When I go to hire someone, I'm not going to hire some white dude who does not have the same level of commitment and education and everything else. I'm not going to hire him just because he's white. And right now, that's the world that we sort of live in, and it's going away. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to say that white people are going to be left behind just because they're going to be left behind. What I'm saying is, is the playing field is being leveled out. And if you're not going to end up, if you, if you don't know how to play, if you don't know how to play by those rules, do not expect that you're going to be able to succeed in this country. Because the reality of it is, there's a whole, there, we have, we have generations of black and brown people that have done nothing but work twice as hard. So if you think you're going to be able to continue to succeed by working, just giving the minimum, by just saying, oh, I'm going to go in there. My cousin's uncle's Jimmy's friend, whoever will hook me up. That stuff's going to be gone soon. And if you don't get a better work ethic, if you don't learn to get down with America, you will be left behind. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will make this an individual clip so that you guys can share this education we just dropped on y'all using references right from our president 